Whether you are going to have someone else film or photograph your wedding proposal, I have a ton of tips to help you capture the moment. And with those tips, I have quite a bit of footage from marriage proposals that I have seen from across the internet to go with those tips. So I will go through them pretty quickly in order of what I think is the most important when photographing or videoing your proposal. Quickly subscribe if you are interested in everything dealing with engagements and watch one of my playlists at the end of this video about more proposal tips, diamond and ring buying tips, or compilations of great proposal ideas. The most important thing to know when getting a photograph or video of an engagement are the two money shots or angles to take. The first and most important angle of the proposal is the one that captures the emotion in the proposee's face. And most of the time that's the girl, the one being proposed to. The second money shot is perpendicular to the proposal down on one knee. And the video should be far enough back that they are in the middle horizontally of the screen and they are slightly towards the bottom vertically so that you can see all the scenery around them and them in the middle at the bottom of the screen proposing from further back. And to be honest, no one cares about your expression as the guy getting down on one knee. Maybe your mom, maybe. The person shooting the occasion is likely gonna be one of your friends and they will favor videoing you, but it's more important that they get the person being proposed to. So as a good rule, have them watch this video on what to know how to do. This is so important that I would get two people to shoot the occasion for you. So you can always have this as a memory. I like videos as my footage. If the camera is good enough, you are likely to get some good screenshots too if you have a really good camera for videos. Some good phone cameras can also film and still get pictures as well at the same time. So it can be a little bit tricky if they're trying to get photographs and videos and having two people doing it, it will be a little bit easier because they can get the video and then quickly switch to pictures and get pictures. But if you only have one person film the occasion, have them start by getting that shot of her face and her reaction with your shoulder in the foreground. And that's just for the original reaction. Then you're gonna have to stay on your knee for as long as possible. Maybe use that time to say a few romantic words as the photographer quickly moves to a second angle and gets that second beautiful angle. And hopefully you guys have kind of practiced this at least a little bit. Staying in that spot is not as weird as it may seem and down on that knee. Watch some videos for examples if you don't believe me. Some people stay on their knee for almost a minute. So don't be afraid to stay on it for a long time and don't get up right after 10 seconds of just staying on your knee. Now lastly, if you can't get anyone to help film the shot, you will have to set up both angles or at least one angle on a tripod. In this case, you'll either need to just video the whole thing or set up a camera to just continuously take pictures. And there are remotes that will do it this way. I will link to some down below. If you do it this last way where no one is filming, it's just you setting up cameras on a tripod, you will have to make sure you set the camera to a high f-stop so it gets everything in focus or in some, I think, phone cameras, it's called panoramic mode. If not, you risk your camera having you guys out of focus, and you would hate to have that and miss that moment. The next most important aspect is the audio. It is what will make your video amazing. There are a few ways to achieve audio so that you can hear your engagement. The first way is the person filming can be close enough to you so that they can hear the engagement on their device, whether it's a camera or a phone. That's assuming you aren't in a loud environment and that you speak clearly and loud. Be part of my world. Yeah! Yeah! That works out fine, but it's not the best. That way is risky too, because too often it comes out Poorly. The second way is to have your phone be constantly recording audio in the background on your person. If you do it this way, you'll need a voice recorder app that you download onto your phone and you can't forget to turn it on before the proposal. So that way, if you're wearing a jacket, you can just put it on one of the inside pockets or you don't have to do it that way. You can place your phone right next to where you're going to be proposing and just put it down somewhere. And then another option also is to get a lapel mic. Now you can hook the lapel mic up to one of the cameras beforehand and then just have it on you somewhere. Just be careful because a lot of the lapel mics, if they're bad, 
they are staticky and their quality doesn't turn out really well and you can just hear every little ruffle of the clothing. Now, if your proposal requires you to set up the spot beforehand, you can just hide any mic you want with a recording device before the proposal. And then you just have the photographer or a friend or someone that's close turn it on as the time draws close. You just need to make sure to remind them to turn it on before you get there. The next tip to capturing your engagement is to know the background. For example, if you're going to a stadium or some sort of game and you're gonna propose at the stadium, you can have a few different angles. For example, the person capturing your engagement can be below you filming up, but if that happens, your background will likely just be some random fans. If you are in one of the front rows and then you have the person filming kind of crouch down from the, some of the seats behind you, the background will be the actual field of the stadium and it will look much more beautiful. For example, there are plenty of stadium proposals online. This one, the guy got the field as the background to his proposal. Now it's a little bit harder for the photographer to get this angle, but because he did, this video got a few million views and honestly, there wasn't anything really exciting or noteworthy or special about this proposal, only that most stadium proposals, they get the other angle because the person capturing it doesn't know what they're doing. So pay attention to the best angle to get the best background for your proposal. Next tip, pay attention to the time of day if possible. An hour before sunset all the way up until sunset is the golden hour for the best lighting for photos or videos. Very strong light like that at midday can ruin a shot. If the day is overcast, you don't really have to worry about it that much because those are great days for getting great lighting all day long. If you are shooting outside and it's not an overcast day, make sure it's an hour before sunset. If you're gonna be doing your proposal in a shadow with a lot of background light, that will actually not be very flattering lighting. And so I would say consider just doing it all in a shady or shadowy area or do it all in a bright area if you have to choose one or the other. Next tip, the post engagement interview. This, in my opinion, is actually quite important. It helps to capture the mood of the engagement. What you do is at the end of the proposal, when the excitement is still there but slightly past the peak, have one of the videographers ask a few questions and film the answers. This is great because a lot of people will not be there to experience the engagement that these people care about, and they wish they were there. This way the family can kind of get a feel for the moment more than just seeing pictures of the engagement. This is especially true for private engagements. This shouldn't and doesn't have to be too long. Just a few questions and you can ask the questions to both of them at the same time. If you want some ideas of what to ask, I will link to a website below this video in the description with a lot of great questions to ask them. Choose just a few of them or make up your own questions. It doesn't really matter. Sometimes this interview is priceless and they say just some awesome, either romantic things or surprising things and it's funny, fun, and you can just feel the excitement from it. Trust me, it's a very good idea. And if you don't use it, then you don't use it. But at least you try and I think you're gonna see that most of the time you get good stuff. Now. Like the post-engagement interview, there's the pre-engagement interview. Sometimes people interview the proposer, the person about to do the proposing, before the engagement as well. You can get even more of a feel for the mood of the day before the proposal this way. This, in my opinion, isn't as interesting as the post-engagement interview, but normally they are at least a little interesting because they're normally a little bit nervous. If you can find a good excuse, sometimes you can interview the person that's going to be proposed to. Like sometimes they'll think the interview is for some other big reason for some excuse that they've given for that day. But probably more important than the pre-interview is just getting some footage of the whole day leading up to the engagement. This normally includes the guy setting up the engagement or planning it out in some way. And also whatever the girl does before the engagement as well. If you watch my main proposal tips video, you know why getting friends to take the girl to get her hair, her nails, and other makeup done in the morning before the engagement is really important. All of that can be videoed and filmed as well, especially if you think there's a good reason, or you can have the friends that are taking the girl out and you can just have them get some of the footage with their phones of the day leading up to the engagement. 
Now, if you're going to shoot the setup of the engagement, don't forget to shoot close-ups of little things in the setups, like signs, decorations, ornaments, or anything that may have sentimental value to the setup of the engagement. This makes great B-roll if you're making a video about the day later, especially. Also, you can film the area without anyone there and it gets a good establishing shot so people know what the area in its totality looks like. Selecting a person to get the footage is actually kind of difficult. Paying a professional to video or photograph will work best for two reasons. Now, I know it's more expensive, but just hear me out. These people know how to get good footage. Remember, your proposal won't last more than a minute and maybe even only like 10 seconds. You need to have a person that is good and quick at getting footage. But also, the proposee likely won't know who the photographer is, and so the photographer will not ruin the surprise. If you choose a friend, they might know that something is going on. But if they aren't professional, remember to get someone you trust to take good photos, to be quick, and someone that the soon-to-be fiance will not recognize. If paying for a professional is out of your budget, then watch my videos on how to buy and save on diamonds and rings in the playlist at the end of this video to free up some cash and money to maybe put towards your engagement and maybe you'll be able to pay a photographer. And if you don't wanna watch those videos, a reputable and less expensive online store for diamonds and engagement rings is linked to in the YouTube description below this video if you're interested. And just one more point, if you're paying a photographer, these possibly can be used as your engagement photos you send out for the wedding. So you will possibly be saving money that way if you think your fiance or soon to be fiance would be okay using these engagements for your engagement photos as well. Anyway, remember, you can really help a photographer out by staying on your knee as long as possible. So if you're not gonna have a professional, the more important it is that you stay on that knee for a long time. And watch more of my compilation videos in the playlist at the end of this video if you wanna see more about the maximum amount of time on one knee that will feel normal. If you plan on having a proposal that you want to have secret and yet still have some things set up, sometimes you can set up a preface for why things are gonna be a little out of the ordinary. For example, sometimes a great way to preface the whole entire proposal to the proposee is to say that you're doing a photo shoot. So I'm here at Downtown Arts Collective. We're doing a photo shoot for the cover of my next single, Take It Slow. My girlfriend Emily is out here helping me out for the photo shoot, but what she doesn't know is that there's a little bit more going on today. I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm happy to help them out and, and do a fun photo shoot. That way, they will know why you want them to get a little dressed up even though you're going on a hike, for example. If you can't find a reason for a photo shoot, just tell them you have a friend that is getting into photography and wants to do a free session to build their photography portfolio and they want you to do it. This preface will do many things and it will also give you a reason why someone is photographing the whole thing without any suspicion from the person you're proposing to. It also gets the person to dress however the photographer wants them to dress. That way, let's say you're going on a hike, the proposee can still be a little done up even though they know they're going on a hike. Another tip, know the location beforehand. It's best if you know the location and find out the exact spot you will propose. This will really let the photographer get ready for amazing pictures or video, whoever that person that's going to be capturing it will be. Another quick tip, be ready to change on the fly. Some things will change on the day of the engagement. You need to be on your game, yet still be in the moment with your soon-to-be fiance. Be ready for it, things are gonna change. Lastly, this is possibly a great money saving tip. Sometimes using the moment to get engagement pictures for wedding announcements is really a great idea. You definitely will have to make sure she is picture ready in this case. Otherwise, she will want to do another photo shoot for the engagements that you're gonna send out for the wedding. But if you are short on money, maybe you can make the engagement proposal double as an engagement photo shoot as well. 
look at engagement photographer websites to get some ideas of the type of pictures they take. And sometimes you can get someone that's a friend that just has a good camera to come and do it as well. But they'll need to follow my tips from before. Even if you aren't getting official engagements, you should probably do a few pictures no matter what. There are a couple classics. Showing off the ring like this, hugging, nuzzling, and kissing. Just look them up on a few engagement photographer websites and you'll get the idea. So. Maybe get a few of those at the end, even if you're not gonna be using them as your engagements. It's really awesome in the moment because you will both be very naturally happy, which makes for great pictures. If you want marriage proposal tips, engagement ring and diamond buying tips, or just more marriage proposal compilation videos for ideas, click on one of these four playlists right now. I have tons of videos on each of the subjects. Click on the links below for the least expensive and reputable places to buy diamonds and engagement rings. Subscribe and watch one of these playlists now.